Welcome back, everyone. And yes, it was Alex Ekubo and Eku Edewar both appear in Your Excellency. I have to say about this Nollywood in focus is that Ike, once again, Ike, was able to bring the beauty um, through this documentary. His choice of soft light, his choice of black and white, especially after his vivid colors in the portrait, really captured the glamorous of Hollywood of the 1940s. But of course, we know Ike is capturing the golden era of Nollywood. So joining us will be the four of the stars from the film and whose talent has given rise to this golden era. Um, they will talk for 30 to 40 minutes and then take questions from the audience. So please continue using the chat function to share your questions and comments. So let me introduce them. Actress, producer, TV host and model, Eku Edewar, named Nollywood Most Daring Style Star by Vogue magazine, will bring her skill to guide the conversation while also sharing her insight. Hi. Hi. <laughs> we are beyond thrilled to, uh, with her, the award-winning actor, model, producer, and Pulse magazine peak for the sexiest man in Nigeria, Alex Ekubo. Hello. Actor, producer, and star of the blockbuster, The Wedding Party, Enina Nwigwe. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Camera on. <laughs> mm -hmm. And living yeah. legend, the influential actress and cultural leader, Joke Silva. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. And of course, I.K. Uday, an artist named three times by the Vanity Fair magazine, the international best dressed list. <laughs> Hello. 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 So together, oh, so the visionaries can shed lights on the making of the portrait and discuss the power of beauty, the self-love and art with a capital A. I will over to you, Eku. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. Um, I'm delighted that we're able to take part tonight and to be celebrated in portraiture. Um, it has been such an honor to be captured by IK. So um, I think I'd like to kick off the conversation with IK, the artist himself to discuss this theme of beauty. Um, so IK, what does beauty mean to you? Why is it something that you focus so much of your work on? Um, that's quite a huge question. Um, <laughs> but to make it quite short, um, beauty is an all encompassing, um, concept uh, that I think uh, human, only human beings have the beauty instinct. Uh, we have that agreeable, but uh, as far as we know, human beings are the ones that have the beauty instincts. And uh, there is also uh, various, like, various permutations of, of the beautiful. Uh, this beauty is not just about the skin or the surface. There is the spiritual aspect of beauty. There is intellectual beauty. There is emotional beauty. Uh, there are many various facets of beauty that, um, uh, that makes me quite fascinated by the whole idea. Uh, so I'm always in endless and ceaseless pursuit of the beautiful in its various permutations. We, de we can definitely see that. Um, you said that beauty is an intervention. So what does this mean? Um, why is it important for you to focus on the beauty of Africans and African-Americans? And, you know, do you regard this as a political act? 
Well, um, I forgot who said so, uh, that all arts is, is propaganda and politics. So um, invariably, uh, the arts can bleed into, into politics as well, but whether it's by design or default. Uh, as regards the phrase that, that beauty is an intervention, um, particularly in African case, it is an intervention and an overdue intervention for that matter. If you live in the West or outside of Africa, the image of Africa is so debased and rubbished uh, by design, okay? And all you get all the time of Africans are uh, really, really most appalling imagery that you don't even want to go to Africa if you're not from there. But I know, I know, I know that, that Africa does possess uh, boundless, uh, beautiful people uh, um, amongst the population that um, the West don't show because the Western people uh, uh, have the agency of mass media in the whole world. Okay, so I thought that by, by going to Nigeria, I grew up in Nigeria, I know the difference. And I know better. I said that, in, and I'm not the kind of person to complain. So one can go around complaining and bitching about how Africans are portrayed in the Western media and for that matter, internationally. I thought that the best way to make this intervention is to go to Africa. And um, as a civil servant and just submit to you guys and make you the most beautiful human beings ever. And that's my game. <laughs> well, thank you. It's been such a pleasure, obviously, being made beautiful. Um, the uh, museum has embraced the slogan, African is beautiful, Nollywood is beautiful, and you are beautiful. Um, when I think about African beauty, I think of a beauty that is unapologetic, it states its presence, it doesn't need permission, it lets you know that we are here. And we are all here today. So let me ask my fellow Nollywood actors their thoughts. And Sijoke. Oh, wow. <laughs> what has. You know, obviously, you have maintained beauty for decades. Yeah. Um, what has been your journey to feeling beautiful? Mm, thank you for that question, Eku. Um, for me, I think it, it's that embracing of, of my skin tone and my, my figure. I've always been very curvy. I've never been what we call in Nigeria, Mashandi. <laughs> you know, and um, for, the, for the medium in which I want to work, you, um, a lot of what you were seeing from the West were, and, and I trained in the West, I, I trained at the Weber Douglas Academy of Performing Arts, and I was always being told to lose weight, you know, so by the time I finished training, I came out and like went in at the size 16, came out at the size 8, but getting into my industry, my industry taught me how to embrace these curves, and so you find that in Nollywood, we have women of all shapes and sizes, women and men of all shapes and sizes, and they are all stars. And then we have, you know, all shades of skin tone. It's just so beautiful. We have, we have from blue black, blue black to your color, <laughs> you know, that, that incredible spectrum of, and, and we find that in the school of Nollywood that, um, IK has portrayed. So it's been wonderful to, to, to you know, go through that journey into accepting and relishing and flourishing in all that. Yes. Well, we have enjoyed your beauty and continue to do so. <laughs> um, Aina, how did having your portrait by IK make you feel? Uh, uh, it made me feel really good, of course. Uh, the maestro, the artistic genius himself. Uh, I learned a lot uh, about beauty. You know, having this conversation about beauty, uh, there was more to that session 
that I have experienced before as an actor who gets photographed often uh, for a magazine, for a character, for a poster for a movie. You know, with this, there was a, a something uh, uh, wholesome about, about uh, how E.K. Uh, directed the shoot uh, that I hadn't experienced before. And it, it, it still it contained everything that he has uh, already mentioned as uh, beauty being all encompassing. Uh, beauty is a very big word. It's uh, humans, it's horizons, it's sunsets, it's things. It's uh, things that are perceived to be pleasurable as a whole. Uh, it's a feeling, it's an emotion, it's passion, it's strength, it's vulnerability, whatever you call it. And that was the magic I could say that uh, EK was able to create uh, with us as artists, as uh, uh, faces of Nollywood who are actors uh, and artists who, who represent humans as uh, characters in different stories. Uh, down to my pinky finger, I remember in some of the poses we're trying to create and it goes, make this hand lifeless, using terms that I hadn't heard before, let this pinky finger drop on, the, on your thigh in a certain way. You know, it was so beautiful. And by the time it came out, I could see across the portraits of everyone that everything was there. There was vulnerability, there was strength, there was, uh, there was passion, there was, there was everything that you call beauty beyond the aesthetic, beyond the, the spectacle that we saw. You know, and uh, that's what uh, really fascinated me about that, uh, that experience and the portraiture and the result and the outcome today is one that we can say represents us as Africa, which is really amazing. Uh, also interesting is the fact that being Nollywood being the subject and the focus of the, of the portrait, uh, it's the same thing for us. Uh, film as a medium being the core of Nollywood uh, is the best medium or it's, it's, it's the, the strongest medium to communicate to shift, shape culture, shape perception, which also is beauty in a sense. You know, what we perceive as uh, pleasurable is what we consider beautiful and it varies from one person to another. And Nollywood is about that. Actors and characters carry through everything humans experience in one character, deliver it and connect with everyone who also feels and sees and, you know, communicates in the same way, the relatability of it is just so amazing. So uh, it was an amazing experience, I'd say, and it feels really good to be, uh, to be here today. Thank you. Alex, um, <laughs> what does beauty mean to you? Um, and what do you do to make others feel beautiful? You're on mute. Hi, sorry. So to me, beauty is how you feel about yourself. So that's saying, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. You have to own it. You have to feel beautiful from within, you know, regardless of what another person, or not, let, not letting the media or any other person describe to you what beauty is. So beauty is in it, is that your God-given ability to, the, to define a subject or something or a group of people or a culture as loving. Um, that is to me. And how I make people feel beautiful, I feel like being a part of the industry, Nollywood, Nollywood has touched a lot of lives. Nollywood has saved, you know, not just Nigerians, Africans, you know, and made the world laugh and made the world a better place. So being able to, you know, come across on somebody's TV, somebody who hasn't met me before, who, hasn't, who haven't had the pleasure of meeting, and the person says, hey, I enjoyed you in this picture, I enjoyed you in this movie, is just simply humbling and exciting. And Nollywood has afforded me that opportunity to, to do that, to show the beauty of not just myself, my culture, my people, my race, uh, my immediate community and country at large. And for that, I say thank you so much to Mr. Ikil Day for, you know, contributing his very little quota to the beautification of not just Nollywood, but of Nigeria and of Africa. As you can see, I'm sitting right behind my portrait, you know, by Ikil Day. I is my favorite. I do everything literally behind this. And ta-da! So thank you, Mr. Ikil Day, once again. My pleasure. Um, thank you, Alex. Ike, 
uh, back to you. Why why portraiture and and photography? Um, so uh, portraiture is very very particular in terms of uh, imagery and representation. Um, I do like in portraiture to um, uh, a shorthand for for the unattainable, um, a sort of a haiku in the sense that it requires a certain amount of uh, uh, precision and conciseness and um, an immediacy, and yet you know, pregnant with ceaseless meaning. And also having all this drama played out in one rectangle, in one frame, uh, the potential of, of portraiture um, when it's well executed. When, when it's well executed, it's extraordinary. Uh, so in portraiture, uh, I'm looking to make, I'm, I'm looking to achieve uh, in, in one rectangle, uh, an imagery that is the equivalent of an event. So, for, so the frame, uh, what what is obtained within the frame, it, uh, it you know, in itself is its own world, um, um, complete and eventful. So, um, you created the cutting edge culture and style magazine, um, A Rude. Is that how you say it? A Rude. Yes, it was named after the Jamaican Rude Wars of the sixties. Yeah. Um. But yeah, and you're here also creating um, extraordinary pictures for museums. Um, how do you see the world of style and art as colliding or departing from one another? Uh, my practice always seeks to uh, seek to um, uh, find the perfect interse intersection and interface between various seemingly um, uh, disparate um, disciplines. I, 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 I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit of, um, I, I, I seek to somewhat um, traffic in this kind of, um, you know, illicit aesthetic pleasure and, and very promiscuous thirst for, for all, of, all of the beautiful in all disciplines and to combine them and make whatever I'm doing very, very new and very particular and have an, um, an, an uh, iconic um, 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 style. So, for example, most most artists who do portraiture, uh, they are not very very fluent in the employment of the sartorial. Uh, the sartorial meaning the cut, the fit, the colors, the textures. They're just not very fluent with it. And, and most of the portraiture is, is, is not very uh, nearly as, uh, as memorable or as astounding, but good or okay. Uh, but if one is very fluent in the saturated department and in how to even um, conduct the, the limbs and the legs and all the, the body in how to um, uh, pose, if you like, uh, all these aspects of uh, uh, stylization and styling it massively informs uh, the beauty quotient of portraiture. And also it helps one to solve the problem for the spectator the, the, uh, and, and the pleasure of looking, you see. So this is um, a question to everyone. Um, how did you feel um, seeing yourselves as works of art? So. Can you okay? Anyone? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, it, it, I, 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 you know, seeing the pose that, um, I came framed of me. I said, look at this man. He sent me to a school mom. <laughs> you know, I look very extremely pre pre proper 
and um, and then I then I see that part of the um, part of the publicity for this exhibition is the fact that you, myself and my husband own you know um, set up a school for the performing arts, and I felt this portrait actually does um, does um, you know show that it, it does you know has you know um, the I, I, that side, I guess, of my character, that the principal side, you know, the principal, the one of the school. But what I also found interesting, what I also found interesting is the fact that vibrancy, you know, working with him and then seeing the end result is the incredible vibrancy of the colors and the intensity of the color. Those colors are, those colors are seriously intense. And if, if, you know, it, 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 it gives you, um, that there, 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 there's a lot of, um, ugh, I guess that's the word, the intensity also gives the motion even when sitting still, if that makes sense. Um, I, I think, I think for, for me, um, I'd say, I'll comment Mr. Ikeode, I constantly have to convince people that this is actually a painting, you know, and it's not a photograph and everybody keeps saying, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, you know, the artist took the Wait, picture. A and then... not a Sorry? I thought it was a photograph, not a No, he, he, he drew it. He took the picture and then, you know, yeah. Jonathan. And I think the only thing he's, um, he's guilty of is um, over beautifying some people. Like, look at Ayinna, for instance. Well, you know, I know Ayinna. I've known Ayinna. <laughs> I was waiting for you, Alex. Alex, it took you this long to come through. It took you this long to come through. I've been waiting for you. <laughs> so I feel like we need to apologize because the little bit of false marketing going on with Ayinna's portrait because the, the portrait is here, Ayinna's Beauty is like here. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Beauty is on the inside, Alex. And beauty is not always about the aesthetics. Yes, it's from right. within. Right. right. <laughs> but 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 you know, on, on, on for real, you know, great job. You know, I felt humbled first of all, just getting the call to be um, a part of this movement. Nollywood has thousands and thousands of talents both home and in diaspora and just getting you know the call to be among the select 50 to be in the presence of you know the great legend herself mrs joke silver her husband uncle lou jacobs genevieve rmd ramsey noah it's just humbling i feel like my career you know came full circle from being a uh, you know started starting artist um, um actor and then being in the presence of this greatness and you know being among these beautiful people and once again i thank you mr Ike uday for helping me get my foot through that door and i really applaud what you're doing with you know nollywood and the portraits getting to travel through countries and and um, people getting to just see and experience nollywood you know Hey, you know, you got to say something smart now. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, something. I mean, you like, uh, yeah, beauty is in the eye. Beauty is in the eye of a beholder, yeah. Um, like I tell Seven. people, uh, I try to focus on people's strengths. People's strengths, you know, uh, we can't all be sexiest uh, man for polls, <laughs> apparently. Uh, and uh, like I said, uh, it case uh, picture, amazing. It's still, when I look at it, I still like try to, I, I see things that I didn't even realize were there every time I look, which is amazing. Um, the, 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 the everything, all the elements of beauty got communicated through the eyes. So the eyes are the windows to the soul and the poise, everything just keeps speaking and keeps giving. And uh, that's just can only be the work of a master. You know, and um, it feels really good, and uh, I feel really honored to be to be here today to be part of this uh, this portraiture for Nollywood representing our industry. Um, it can only get better from here. I tell people all the time: focus on what it is that you want to start. Know yourself is the first thing. That's the pivot of life, and from there spins everything that we can define as beauty. So we are all beautiful. Uh, we may not have the same aesthetics. We may not, but we, may, we also don't have the same uh, internal functionalities. You know, individuality, I think, is the word here. And that's where the ultimate beauty lies. 
And this picture made us all individuals in such a beautiful way, away from the characters we play, but who we really are, what we don't see in the mirror when we look, EK was able to dig deep and, and bring it out. And I think that is amazing work. Uh, humans are beautiful, art is beautiful, and this is a combination of both. So it can, it can, it can get better. Nice. Um, I, I mean, I felt amazing having the, my portrait taken. Um, and I thought it was such important work in the sense that um, I think sometimes when, when you know, I, EK spoke about um, credibility and per, per, um, perception and how the world looks at you, um, you know, and it, it's how important it is to, you know, sort of reaffirm how you, how you see yourselves. Um, because sometimes I feel like there's always a bit of imposter syndrome when you're chasing a standard um and the the entire exhibition gave this sort of structure to our industry in a way that was like well this is here um it is a glamorous and evolving and stunning industry with lots of color and and multitude of talents so it was it was lovely to have it documented because i think that we don't document as much as we should properly um and it was and it was a, a nice to have that documented to um, to show just exactly where we are um, and to sort of rewrite the, this narrative that a lot of people all over the world don't have, which is that we do have this this movie industry that is that is um, equally um, equally um, enjoyed in a sense. And, you know, we're working towards the technical standards, but the the creativity is there and the talents are there. So thank you for that, EK. Um, and I guess I guess the final question, um, I wanted to, to say to EK before asking a specific Nollywood question was, why did you decide to focus on Nollywood? Um, actually, I, I was away from Nigeria for, for the long, long time. Uh, because I didn't like what um, how it was being governed. Uh, it was uh, just uh, a series of uh, like pathetic governmental management or mismanagement of the of the, uh, of, um, of, of the wealth. Nigeria is one of the most richest countries in the world, and uh, and it's uh, just awfully awfully managed uh, in terms of its wealth. So I was absent from Nigeria. Um, um, on a self-imposed exile. And when I came across Nollywood uh, was um, uh, a story in, on, on the front page of the New York Times in 2000. So I thought, I thought maybe I saw Bollywood and I looked again, it was with an N. So that piqued my interest. That was in 2000 or so. And then later on, seven years later, there was a big article of on Nollywood in the New Yorker. You know, the New Yorker, they do all these like, long pieces that some people take days to finish the article, but I read quite fast. I was able to do that in one in a day, plus other things I was doing. So I, so I called my, my older sister because she's very conversant with Nigerian community, which I'm not. And uh, she watches Nollywood, and I don't watch Nollywood movie as well, at the time as well. So I asked her what she thought about the industry. She said, she knows all of you guys. Um, she said, I think you should go to Nigeria and do this project, we should. And, um, and have a good, a good, a good uh, uh, sixth sense. And I do listen to my sister as well. So she said, I think you should go and do this project. And I did because um, it is truly my first my truly first subject on Africa. You know, I've done some some bits here and there, but this is really my my my, my most profound um, uh, big project on uh, at, um, on Africa as a subject. Yeah? And it was also um, a homecoming of sorts. Uh, having divorced myself from Nigeria and Africa for over three decades. Um, it was a homecoming. And also, um, and, and then uh, to the center of your question, when I saw Nollywood, I saw myself 
as well. I, if I was, if my younger self would have stayed in Nigeria and worked with you guys and not even come to New York. Uh, so when I saw Nollywood, I said, this is my type of Nigerians. And, uh, and I was so looking forward to, um, uh, to travel to Nigeria and to do that. And also bear in mind that I don't like flying and I was I, <laughs> I get petrified of, of, of going to the airport to take the plane. So, but in this instance, I threw caution to the wind and uh, Osahorn bought me a ticket and said, you have to come here now. So I, I went. Well, thank you so much for coming. It's, it's been a, a real pleasure. Um, and Stoke, I'm going to give you the last question because I feel like okay. there will be a lot of questions from the audience. Um, so maybe we should open it up to that. But um, how have you seen uh, Nollywood change since you started in the industry? And what do you, where do you want to see it go? Maybe she should refresh me. Okay, I think we, we have a problem hearing you. Yes, in school. And I, you know, um, Sisha refresh out uh, maybe computer. Okay. Maybe I should take over. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you all so much. And honestly, I could listen to you all day chat. I feel like I'm part of the group, even though I'm not there with you guys. Uh, we have a lot of questions from the audience and let's not deprive them from, uh, from you know, all the good questions they sent you. So I'm going to throw a few at you all guys and I'm going to start with Eku as she has been asking all the questions <laughs> tonight. So Gozi from the audience is wondering if these amazing actors who are part of Nollywood ever find themselves comparing themselves to actors and the, condi the condition of Hollywood. If so, how do you, f how do you deal with these feelings Exactly. So obviously, you know, we're exposed to um, to Hollywood and the world standard of acting all the time. Um, and to be honest, I'm always inspired to to you know achieve achieve the same sort of effect in cinema in my own way, in a way that relates to my audience audience that I'm you know that I'm that I'm portraying myself as to um I feel like when I was younger um when I first started and I didn't see the industry as I saw it now I think I definitely was unsure about whether I was going to be able to have any success um in the way that I understood success here um and as I've seen the industry evolve and grow and you know a lot more care and time to, into the stories that we're telling into um into you know into the styles of films that are coming out that I've started to see how cl much closer um cl closer that distance is coming together um and more and more I'm be, I mean, being able to find projects that I feel um are on par in terms of you know, in terms of of quality and the relationship between the actor and the story and you know and the camera um so yeah i i don't how i feel i feel excited i feel like there will be a point where our films are in global conversation a lot more and 
and alongside those those films, if that makes sense. <laughs> Yes, and I feel like more and more, I think uh, all the movies are included, I mean, in all type of, you know, platforms today, not as much as we want to, but that there's definitely, you know, some uh, real engagement from international audience. So the next question, maybe I'll go for Nina for this uh, question. Basically, it's from a, an anonymous viewer, but he's asking, um, uh, to our panel to share some thoughts on how to show the beauty of Africa with Nollywood. So maybe it is also an opportunity to speak more about audiences and the, par the power of self-representation. You want me to repeat the question? Okay. Um, I think I have, a, I have an understanding of, uh, of, of the question and it's, uh, it's tricky. It, has, it runs different angles uh, from experience as an actor I think uh, perception is a very strong thing. Um, uh, we are basically uh, at work uh, put against a canvas. You know, we are paintings in ourselves because uh, the director is the, 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 the painter really and he, he puts us up on this canvas. And the backdrop of this canvas when we film in Nigeria is Nollywood, it's Nigeria, it's Africa. Uh, I, I have been privileged to work uh, across the continent and beyond. Uh, even where Africa has to be set. I have, I have a film currently in Sydney, in the US, North America, called The American King. It's like a futuristic Africa, but shot in the US, but set in Africa in the story. You know, so that's still oh. Africa. It's still us. It's like a United States of Africa. A film, uh, Alex happened to be a, you know, play a cameo in the film as well. You know, so um, <laughs> that, is, that is what we need to do. Uh... Sorry? No, 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 Someone you're good. Me? Yeah, no. so... Um, Basically, that's what we. That's how. That's that. That's how best we we can show show the uh, the beauty of Africa. Already, we embody the beauty of Africa as as characters, as people, with our energy and everything that we express. You know, our ebullience and whatever you call it. Uh, but then there's also the beauty in the aesthetics, the beauty in the environment, both uh, the uh, animate and inanimate objects. I, I, I make the same case uh, when I film outside of the continent or even on the continent outside of Nigeria. If you're bringing a, a character for a certain, a, 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 an actor who's established for a certain reason, within the commercial uh, angle that you're, you're putting him against your backdrop, that's also tourism. Uh, again, case in point, Wedding Party 2. It was uh, at a time where there was a recession in Nigeria and uh, Nigerians weren't going to Dubai as much as they used to for every party in the world. Every it's my birthday, we're going to Dubai. It's this, we're going to Dubai, and we, they had to. I could figure that they were they, they were trying to re-anchor the beauty of Dubai through the favorite characters of Nigerians, you know. And by the time Nigerians saw us against the backdrop that was Dubai, business picked up. While I was there recording my moments, people were changing their flights, sending me messages via email, via DM you know, and reshuttling re re their flights to Dubai instead of the, the UK, you know, or, or, or Europe or America, they were coming and some, some even came to the same hotel that I stayed in, you know, so that's the power of, uh, of film as a medium. Uh, so we were put up against the backdrop and that pulled Nigerians back to Dubai and uh, traffic got, got back to Dubai. So that is how we can show the beauty of Africa through film. Uh, making sure that we, we put ourselves against the best backdrop when we have a chance to. Some stories are not meant to be told for that reason, but the, those that are, we should. Um, we grew up watching Hollywood films, and I have so many impressions of, uh, I had so many impressions of America until I grew up and became exposed and traveled to understand that this was all perception. It was all built and anchored on us, you know. So uh, film and the beauty of Africa, I don't think it's a better channel or medium uh, than films. So uh, doing a very good work, globally appreciated work against our best backdrops. Again, I said, check out uh, the American King. You'll see what I mean when I say aesthetic beauty of Africa. It just captures it completely. It's currently in cinemas and on platforms in North America. Amazing. So since Joke is back with us, I have a question for her. <laughs> <laughs> Ask by <laughs> So basically the question is like, who do you see as the important audiences from who do you work for in Nollywood? Who do you see the important audiences from whom do you work in Nollywood? Okay, um, first of all, I do apologize for going off like that so unceremoniously. Um, for me, my, my, my audience is 
is first of all the Nigerian, the Nigerian audience. To be because the story, a lot of the stories that we tell are Nigerian stories. And to be truthful to those stories. Because when I am truthful to those stories, then it is then possible to reach a wider audience who are interested in knowing who we are as Nigerians. And what, you know, and then we then capture the African audience. When we capture the African audience, then we capture the global audience. But for me, the, the audience starts from the Nigerian audience. For me, it's very key to be truthful to that Nigerian story. And the beauty of the Nigerian story is like Simamanda says, it is not a single story. So whilst you can have within Nigeria, it till now existing, you know, you're looking at the 19th century, you know, side by side with the, with the 21st, you know, so all that, there's that incredible spectrum in the world that we live in. And it, it's wonderful to be able to capture that in our stories, um, you know, as storytellers, yes. Well, thank you. Um, Andrew is asking IK if he could ever see himself acting in Nollywood. He yeah. says you should definitely have a visual style and a presence. <laughs> um, inshallah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have another one coming for you. Um, Norwood is asking, I think, could you speak more about why and how you see all art as propaganda and politics? I believe it's maybe one of your quotes. <laughs> well, that's a very wise man question, isn't it? Um, it's a very huge question, actually. Uh, and I'm not sure whether I want to delve into it. But, but very briefly, without being um, dogmatic, uh, which is a very, very slippery terrain, uh, when you look at the um, same religion, when you, um, when you look at the image of uh, Christ, for example, um, I believe it was uh, the German artist, maybe Albert Dürer or, or, or somebody from that uh, epoch who depicted Christ as um, blonde, blue eyes, pale skin, um, a personage. Uh, but is that the image of Christ? Far from it. But um, when, when Christianity came to Europe, uh, the European artists, it was incumbent on European artists to, to, to image the, uh, the, uh, the, the biblical characters after European people. Uh, so that was a propaganda tool. That is a very prime example of propaganda, art as propaganda and politics. Um, so the use of imagery in, um, uh, um, uh, in the Christian religion is a very prime example of art as propaganda. Uh, uh, because uh, if, if you look at um, most of the paintings uh, 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 from, uh, from the Bible, or that is informed by the Bible, you don't see African people represented, uh, or even Arabs or uh, Asians. It's mostly uh, uh, you know, the Caucasian man and woman, the Madonna. Uh, the, the Christ and uh, St. Mark's, all these people, they don't look anything like uh, characters from the Middle East, where this religion came from, you see. So I think in a nutshell, that is one example of that. Also, another thing too is that, for example, in America, which go back to a question, in America, the way they depict Americans uh, uh, on the hierarchy of representations, the white Americans come first. And then uh, uh, the, uh, the, sec the second, the second at a very far distance is maybe booking African-Americans or uh, Asian-Americans or what have you. Uh, so if, some, if an alien was, some, was to come to the States and just, uh, and just look at um, American television, you would think that America is mostly like um, a pale skin country, uh, inhabitants. Uh, but you have many other people that live here, but 
the imagery of America they perpetuate is this like wonderful, wholesome, um, Caucasian uh, uh, people. And lo and behold, our example of art as propaganda and politics, the way they depict oftentimes the way that the African-American, or uh, if you like black subjects are depicted in Hollywood movies, on television, in literature, um, is oftentimes very crude, uh, very, very pathetic, uh, very sickly, and very criminal. And, and as opposed to the way the, um, the European American is depicted. Uh, the European Americans, uh, they all equally have drug addicts. Uh, we have like many white drug addicts, heroin addicts, or uh, prostitutes. You, don't, you really see that in movies. Uh, those, those roles are oftentimes assigned to African Americans. As, as though, if you look at the movies, all African Americans have black drug addicts and they're, they're homeless and, they're, and, and they can get their act together. So that's an example of, of art as propaganda and politics. So I'll rest my case there, sorry. Okay. Well, thank you. So the lighter side, um, Alex, you have Andrew asking, comedy is universal. Could showing a uniquely Nigerian sense of humor in, Holly in Hollywood help increase its global exposure? Oh, yes, yes. I feel like comedy is the one language that everyone can relate to across the world, regardless of, of, of um, race, regardless of a language, regardless of whatever barrier may be, uh, may be prevalent. We watched uh, Mr. Bean, you know, you know um, and he didn't say anything, but in his mannerisms and in his actions, we found it funny and people in Nigeria could relate to it and found him very, uh, very hilarious. So sharing our type of comedy as well to the world is contributing to, this is what we as Nigerians find funny, you know, at the end of the day, you know, is putting it in the, uh, putting it out there to the world to see how that we have a sense of humor. This is things that make us laugh. This is things that, you know, relating to our culture, our people, our existence. So at the end of the day, Every country, every race, every group or set of people have a different perception or a different perspective to what they find hilarious and they bring that to the table vis-a-vis -vis the general um, um, idea of what is funny. So yes, exporting Nollywood comedy to the world will contribute, to, will contribute greatly to how they perceive um, Nollywood and Africa at large. Hope that answers the question. Yes, I think it does to me. <laughs> I hope it does too. Um, so one, I think that is to all of you guys, and I think it will be nice that everybody has a has a say on this one. You have Ade Tola who's asking. Um, sorry, not Ade Tola. You have an aspiring actor called Tari. Um, is asking what uh, what advice you might offer for aspiring actors. What are the hardest roles? What are the easiest roles? One fun. What are the fun fact that people might not be aware? I don't know if Eku, you want to start, and maybe we go around and you know see the advice <laughs> for an aspiring actor. Um, you said what are the what are, what was your hardest easiest role? Yes, um, what's and fun what fun fact? Yeah, that we might not be aware of. Oh, I'm so uh, I'm very good at sports. <laughs> That's a fun fact. That's a fun fact. Um, hardest role? Mm, well, I guess my can I say that my hardest and most enjoyable role to date has been um, playing uh, Neca. Um, Amadi on Castle and Castle, the series, which you can watch on Netflix. Let me plug like Aina. <laughs> um, which you can you can watch on on Netflix, and yes, because it was exciting to play that role. Um, one of my friends, who's an actress um, in, in the UK, she said this to me one time that she feels that roles kind of come on along when you need them. And I, and I think at the time that I was at the time that I, I got that part, I was I was looking 
to be seen as stronger and I was looking I was looking to feel stronger as well and and to feel like I, I was in control you know of my environment because I wasn't feeling that control at the time and that character gave me that um she's very tough but loving and um and I had to change how people knew me because even though I trained as an actress first everyone on um, everyone came to to know me in in the Nigerian entertainment industry as a presenter and a very bubbly and happy presenter um you know all about the glamour and the fashion and then having to play this lawyer who was more about the cases and the people that she was relating with and um having to be you know just really really strong um, it was it was a great role and it was probably the hardest because it's the first time I had done a series of that, you know, of that nature and and um, series are obviously a lot more demanding than than shooting a film. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Andrew, Kate, do you have any advice for aspiring actors, your hardest, your easiest roles? OK, um, for my advice for aspiring actors is that work, try and get you know, do the work, you know, don't, don't keep saying, oh, um, I don't want to do this role because, you know, any, any opportunity you get to work, work, because the more work you do, the better you hone your skills. And also getting to be, and networking, getting to know people within the industry and the way you work when you are on set is also very important. Be very disciplined, be, arrive on time, you know, be very disciplined about everything, pay attention to detail. Because the word of mouth is also very important for us in this industry. And the news will, will carry as to what kind of um, worker you are. Now, um, as to the hardest and easiest, I think I would say that the hardest would have so far. I think I, um, there's all, my, all the work that any, any piece of um, work that I get, any role that I want to play, there's always a, a, a modicum of of difficulty about it because I'm, I'm, I'm approaching it very fresh, wanting to get into the world that the, that the writer has created and it's always fresh with, you know, with each writer. So I, I, but one of the ones that comes to mind is probably Diamonds in the Sky by um, Femi Adebayo Salami. Um, it was directed by Kulia Folayo. Now, why was Diamond in the Sky? Because I had the extra layer of having to then do a northern accent, and I think I, I I think I actually succeeded with the northern accent. Sometimes people said that I sounded like an East African. It's also on Netflix. Plug it in, you know. It's also on Netflix. But um, so that was a bit difficult um, and um, easiest to to be honest with you. I'm not sure that I've had any issue because of what I see. That's uh, how I approach my work. Um, fun, something fun. Well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. Yes. Okay. Enyane, do you have anything to, to advise on aspiring uh, advice? Yes. Um, same advice I'll, yes, same advice I'll give to everyone first is uh, know yourself, individuality is key, especially in a world where you're in the spotlight and everybody has a say on how you should do what and when or how you should look uh, or not. You know, you have to find that pivot in yourself. I'll give an example of when I started. I've always been a very sports active person. I like to work out. So I, I kind of got in a, from a bulky side, not really bulky, but built in a, in a way that uh, it wasn't very normal to oh. see on screen at the time. And people always said, oh, you, you're, you're going to end up getting being a security, uh, private security or a bouncer, like we call them or a thug in the movies. I'm like, and I mean, it's okay. Well, who says I can't be a doctor who likes to work out? Who says I can't be a reverend father who likes to work out? Who says I can't be an artist who likes to work out? And, um, you know, um, what, do you want us to all be, look the same in, in a picture? That would be very bland and boring. Uh, and in no time, you see today, like uh, you see the Alex and Cole, they're in the gym every day, all day, all night, trying to get some chest out, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> so that, 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 you know, that's what it is. You need to own yourself. Um, uh, in, in recent times, uh, I've uh, been through conversations with a couple of uh, international agents for representation and in trying to make that decision, you know, the questions that come forward, you see that there's a struggle to, to shift you from who you are into the world that you're coming into. And, and by the time we have conversations, because I, I was fortunate to know myself 
before getting on the, embarking on the journey of becoming an actor. So uh, it was very hard to shift me from post to post. I focused on what it was I knew I could do in the space. And it was about my vision and on my terms, how I wanted to do it. And that is very key. Because if you try to be an Alex, try to be a Ramsey, try to be a, an RMD, at the end of the day, you're not you. And you are the pivot. You can't run away from yourself. You know, so that individuality, that mindset is very key. And by the time I had conversation with international agents, and they tried, I can't be more black than the black American, and they can't be more African than, than me, but I can acquire their accent and perform, having conquered a continent, Africa, and coming with a market value. So you have to understand yourself, that everything spins around knowing yourself. And the moment you lose that, no matter how much skill you acquire, it cannot be as solid or fortified because every perception that you give or you send out is new, is fresh to the audience. As long as there's truth, as long as you believe yourself, you understand all these elements of beauty, which we have talked about before, vulnerability and everything, your eyes will communicate it and human beings feel and see in the same way and you connect. It's about truth. Again, 10 plus 10, 19 plus 1, 20, you know, 18 plus 2, 12 plus 8, that 20, there are so many ways to arrive at a choice in delivering and communicating to the audience. And it always will come from the confidence you have in your choice. And that is the confidence you have in yourself. And I think that is the most important thing. Know yourself and acquire every other skill that is possible. Thank you. And Alex, I think as a, a follow-up question, uh, Jude would like to some insight into the process of the Nollywood star system. You'd like to know how did it, how did you develop and how did it metamorphose over time? Sorry, I'm trying to get it <laughs> right. Well, just just to it's it's about the process. You know, you can't always tell people and encourage people that you know the process cannot be over or underemphasized. You know, you must put in the time. You know, um, to get to where you want to get to, and just to touch a little bit on what you know, what I was asked earlier. You know, I'll give this uh, any aspiring actor, like I'll tell Aina as well. You know, like uh, Constantine Stanislavski said, there are no small parts, only small actors. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, there are literally no smart. You have to take every role and own it. You know, uh, another actor, Dabs Priya, once also said, every character actor in his only two sphere is the lead. So given the opportunity, success is when preparation meets opportunity. As an actor, as an aspiring actor, you have to train. You have to train, you have to train, you have to train because you realize that there are a thousand and one uh, people waiting out there to, to, to have the opportunity that you've been afforded. So you have to train so that when once given the opportunity, you would um, be able to best represent yourself. Because like I advise everybody, people have a way of, you know, uh, when they are with family or in their comfort zone, oh, they are great at this. They nail every monologue, every challenge. But when they are given the opportunity, they're not able to come through with that same energy. And then we, the audience, don't know you at, at home, so we are not able to see and judge you um, based on that performance. Um, so the, the left of the question as well, this, everybody you see here has put in time in this work. I've known Eku for almost 15 years. I've known him for 20. You know, Auntie Joker has been in the industry for almost, what, four decades. It's time put in constantly you know, a lot of times I figure that our generation wants, we mostly want to get in today and be Josh Clooney the next day. You know, that is almost impossible to happen. So um, you have to keep putting in the work, you know, a great actress in Nigeria, Inyedo once said to me, you're only judged by your last work. So, you know, you're, mm -hmm. you're us here, getting done with projects, jumping onto the next one, onto the next one, onto the next one. You got to keep striving and keep trying to push you know, push the glass ceiling until we get to, you know, wherever we want to get to. Super, thank you, Alex. I have two questions for IK. So when did you fell in love with fashion? Pamela is asking. <laughs> uh, actually, I never really liked fashion. <laughs> okay. Um, what I do like is style. Um, because fashion is... Um, it's um, be, um, 
is this endless desire to be in agreement with majority. Uh, where our style is to be, uh, is, is to have to have the pleasure and, and, and intelligence to disagree with, with this um, um, majority. Uh, uh, passion is, is very, very fascistic in, a, in, his, uh, in his essence because that which is fashionable must be subscribed to every season. And, and it's very, very, it's about trends and what have you. Whereas style is about um, the individual, uh, you know, putting a, a pause um, on, the, on the trends to examine what is happening and to somewhat use the items that are available uh, in the sartorial uh, basket and curate one's look, if you like, and not what is prescribed by the fashion system. Uh, so I, I never liked fashion as in that sense because it's very, very uh, authoritarian and um, I'm not one to acquiesce authorities easily. So uh, uh, style is my mode of refusal to be, to be policed by a fashion system. Okay, and you have style, I have to say. Um, yeah. if somebody else wants to know what you're working on at the moment, and where would you be like to go? Where, sorry, and where would be like to go? Where? Okay, not really. Where would you go next, basically? Is that me for me? Yes, still you. Uh, what was the question again? Sorry. What are you working on now, and where will you go next? Uh, I've been working on um, a body of work with um, flowers and orchids oh, nice. and, and various objects. And, uh, <laughs> and I've been studying quietly. I don't know if I should share this with the public, but um, I've been studying um, the Japanese um, um, flower arrangement that have a history that spans over 500 years and, um, and I, I love this Japanese approach to flower arrangement. Of course, uh, they owe that to the Chinese as well. And, but as all in Japan, they would quote a culture and then better, better it, even more refined it. So I've been doing that and uh, that has been pretty much the basis of what I'm doing with flowers, but in my own um, uh, uh, Ude style if you like. Um, but between that, um, my next big project, I'm working with Osa Hon as a project director, uh, become like a twin uh, in, in terms of our work in um, uh, history. Uh, the, our next project is a uh, portrait of, um, of uh, African-American women, uh, all the overachievers and alpha, fe alpha females of, of African-American population with uh, the Dazza Ness project. And it will be the same format, um, a book, uh, a traveling exhibition, and documentary of, of um, um, well-accomplished African-American women. Yeah. Well, thank you, I.K. Well, we have a question from Rahima here asking um, any of you um, what kind of, uh, if, you, if, if there's some genres of film in Hollywood you would like to see more of, what type of films you would like to be part that is different than what you already have done? Should we ask Joke for this first uh, answer? <laughs> um, well, I, I really would like to see quite a few of uh, um, stage plays coming into film. We have a, a, a rich um, body of, of writers, pantheon of writers for, for theater. And many of them would really do, would really translate very well into film. They'll probably even do better on film than, the, than they would in the theater. Um, I'm looking at works like um, J.P. Clark, Ozidi, the technology 
is just right now to be able to 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 to, to film an EPD. Um, yes. So so even though I'm an incredible, I love the theatre, and it's, I don't want to take work away from the theatre, but it's just an answer to that question. I'd like to see more work and, of course, either produce them or perform in them, but theater-based, because I, I do think that it would also help with some of the, give a kind of intellectual base, a bit more intellectual base, some of our writing. It would help, I think so. So we don't have a lot of time yet, but I think this uh, will be wonderful if we could have a suggestion of if somebody is new to Nollywood, what would you recommend to start with in terms of movies, titles, subtitles, not subtitles? So can we have a recommendation from each of you? Could be your movie, could be something else, but what would you recommend? Would you go, Eku, first? Um, yes, uh, God Calling. I think it's a great film. Mm. Um, I definitely think it's if you want to be introduced to it's it's not typical Nollywood in terms of the um, subject matter, but um, it's it's very exciting in terms of what um, they need with uh, visual effects. Okay, great, Alex. You're in mute. I think, first of all, I'll, I'll recommend, you know, any Nollywood movie, you know, if, if you check out the reviews, you can see, but if there's one I'd recommend as well, it's called The Power of One. And yes, I'm in it. It's showing on Amazon Prime. And it's a movie about a popular musician, Two-Face Adibia, everybody knows him, um, who tried to lead a protest against the government of the day. So it touches on, you know, music, you know, um, the re harsh realities in Nigeria vis-a-vis -vis how it affects the people and using star power to try to start a movement that kind of shook Africa. It's a good movie to watch. It's called The Power of One. I believe it's showing on Amazon. And there are a lot of other great titles, you know, um, you know, not, uh, about um, on Netflix as well. So you can just search an actor's name there, like Alex Ekubo, for instance, on Netflix and a couple of... Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, so why you, you yes. <laughs> the array of choices that you would be. Okay, bumping. thank you. So, thank you, Alex. And Inya, Inya, you what uh, are your suggestions here? Yeah, I think Inya just has one. Okay, I'll you. suggest. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, well, same, same. You copy and paste. Uh, the name and you see, let's see how, how much you find. <laughs> but I'll recommend, for the sake of the question, uh, for someone who's new to Nollywood and the Nigerian culture, uh, besides the fact that I'm in the film, uh, The Wedding Party, uh, say it really captures our essence. It captures uh, the beauty in our chaotic nature. It captures uh, the diversity in our culture uh, beyond our personalities and, and various languages. Nigeria is a, is a country of 250 plus languages, 500 plus dialects, that's how diverse we are. And wedding party captures all of that energy from the costuming of the different cultures uh, and the drama you go through in trying to marry across tribes. And also the energy that is the, the, the Nigerian spirit. So I think it really captures that. And uh, if uh, you ever thought we were really loud in Nigerian movies, you would understand with the wedding party with how well made it is that that is just who we are. It's not because we do not uh, hear what, or we have coconut heads, you know, but it just shows the spirit of the Nigerian and shows the beauty, shows the glamour, uh, shows everything that is our essence, really, in a, in a story. Well, thank you. And how about you, Joke? Any good suggestion for us? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we, we, um, you know, in the part of the world that you are in, I, I think what the others have said is a very good suggestion which is um, just search Netflix. One of the ones that I'd, I'd suggest is King of Boys. I'm not in it, but I like the storytelling. I like the storytelling. I like, I like the um, King of Boys part one and two. There's King of Boys and then there's Return of the King. But you know, start with King of Boys. It's, it's, it's very interesting. The, it's the underbelly of the political world. 
of Nigeria, and I find it very exciting. Like I said, I'm not in it. I'm on, in other films in um, in uh, not, um, on Netflix. Certainly, you'll see them. Well, thank you. And IK, what are your suggestions? <laughs> You're living in America. What are your Nollywood suggestions? <laughs> um, I'm not very, I'm not terribly very conversant with a lot of the movies in Nollywood, I must confess. Um, but that said, um, I, I love um, Indian uh, The Wedding Party. I have seen that because it was, uh, it was uh, widely popular. Um, so, Kunla uh, Poloyan, um, October 1st. Yeah, good. October 1st. Yes, that's the way to spell it. Because also Kunla had come to New York City and there was um, a film screening at NYU, uh, it's in New York University. So, I attended the film screening for Wedding Party um, at NYU. So, I saw that one. Um, and living in bondage, I've seen because apparently when we are doing the book, um, the, the writer, um, Chigozie uh, uh, Obioma, his last name, um, he, he, um, he um, uh, you know, wrote about the, uh, living in bondage as, as being um, uh, the first proper Nollywood film that launched this whole uh, industry. Uh, so so, so I, have, I have seen that one. Uh, but other than that, um, yes, I would recommend Living in Bondage, October 1st, and The Wedding Party. I didn't see the part two. I saw only a small part of it. But my interest in um, about Nollywood uh, from from an intellectual and cultural point of view, it's not so much the movies, it's, uh, it's what they represent and what they embody, you see. Um, so that, I mean, this is really what interests me the most about Nollywood, which is why I went to do the other you know, podcast. Mm. It's the individual, the individual men and women who are building this, this industry and the least I can do is to, is to, is to go to Nigeria and 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 to and to and to and to help to move forward. Well, thank you so much for all your enthusiasm. Thank you for sharing this time with uh, our audience. Thank you, our audience, for so many questions they've sent. We couldn't go through all of them, but I think we need to let the stars go because they're very busy and they have busy schedules. So to close this fabulous event, we're delighted to offer you the opportunity to see more of the exhibition and its artworks accompanied by music from Nollywood. So turn up the volume, kick back, and let the music that sets the mood of Nollywood films fill your room. The image that you will see are a mix of IKOD luminous portrait and composition with scenes from within the gallery itself. And please look up in the chat exhibition website shown in the chat for upcoming events like the Sound of Nollywood podcast series featuring legendary Georges Collinet of which the music is just a teaser that will finish with a concert in the garden of the Smithsonian National Museum of African Art. Whether you are in Lagos, Dubai, Los Angeles, or Washington, DC, this exhibition and this museum are here for global African everywhere. So see you soon at the museum. Good night. Good afternoon. Oh, bye. <laughs>